Okay, step number one is probably the most important step. We gotta make sure the propane tank is empty. So get a flathead screwdriver like I have and unscrew the screw in the side of the valve. Basically, it's a flathead screw. It's the only one you're gonna see. It's lefty loosey. And if there is still propane in this, it's gonna start hissing wildly when you turn that out. And make sure you do this outside too. Next, we're gonna unscrew the handle part and that whole assembly will pull out and there will basically be a big hole you can see right down inside the tank. And that's righty Lucy. Once again, make sure you do this outside and make sure it doesn't start hissing. If it starts hissing, there's still propane in there. Now next, just to be on the safe side, I'm gonna blow it out with some compressed air. If you don't have compressed air, that's okay. You can fill this up with water too. Water will push any residual gas out of there. Compressed air will blow any residual gas out of there. I know this thing's empty. It doesn't have any pressure in it. It's probably been empty for years, but I'm going to do it anyway because I don't want any surprises. So maybe you should too to be on the safe side. Okay, so first thing, I'm going to cut off the top metal guard. And then I'm going to flip it around and cut off the bottom one too. See all these sparks and such. That's why we emptied it out first thing and made sure it was empty. Okay, so this valve has been in here for eons. And it's going to be very corroded, very locked up in there. So what I'm going to do is give it a little heat around that collar. Things expand when you heat them. Don't heat the valve itself. Just heat the metal, the steel around the valve. And then I'm going to give it some love taps, too, with the hammer, uh, just to get it out and knock it loose. And grab a big-ass pipe wrench, too, if you got one. It worked pretty well in my case. This valve was Lefty Lucy, and it's three-quarter thread. So it's a really good idea to plug the hole with something. I just used a wet rag and threaded it in there. You can also use a three-quarter cap from any home improvement store. Just standard pipe thread. Here's an example of one. Yay, now comes the grinding part. I just selectively grinded because the coating was really hard to get through, so just the parts I needed to grind and clean up, I did. Turns out it was wobbling around like I had it, so I put it in this massive old vise that I picked up for really cheap, and it worked. It was just big enough, thank God. I have a tremendous amount of scrap steel laying around the shop, and I love repurposing things. Actually, I never ever buy new steel, rarely. So I took this piece of channel that I had, and I kind of made it into two pieces of uh, angle iron for the feet. I figured that would work really good for the base of the propane tank to make it stand up straight. Improvised feet, so to speak. I just cut it in half and trimmed it up a little ways. Grinded it. A lot of grinding in this project, for sure. And here at the last part, I'm trying to replicate the curve in the bottom of the tank so these pieces fit against it real tight. Welding the feet on was kind of difficult at first. I tried to weld one at a time on, and it didn't come out very good. It wasn't very straight or symmetrical, so... I finally clamped them both together and that worked out very well. Typically I try to just eyeball things when I'm fabricating and it seems to work out alright. Right now I'm going to permanently weld them on there. This tank was really rotted and corroded but there were no holes completely through it. It was just pitted up really bad. It welded alright. I have a DC MIG welder that I converted. And it seemed to do the trick you know, fairly decent. For you welding gurus out there, I'm running electrode negative DC. And I just have the vise grounded in this situation. It worked out pretty well. The biggest objective to adding these feet on was having something to clamp to. Next, it's time to start making the handle so I can pour the gas can. Uh, I used a piece of old shopping cart that I found abandoned along the side of the road. Welding an extra little piece, it was already bent 
thank God, because I can't bend metal worth of shit yet. I'm learning, I'm getting better. I wanted the handle to be kind of long and wrap around, so this piece worked exceptionally well. As is, the scrap piece from the shopping cart was almost perfect for a handle, but I did have to add a little piece to it, so it made contact with the top and the side of the propane tank. People always abandon shopping carts and leave them next to big apartment complexes, and that's where I got this one. So it's time to see if this handle fits, and it looks like it's a really nice fit, actually. I'm welding it on here. Uh, this magnet is definitely a lifesaver. Really cheap. Bought it at Home Depot for 5 bucks. Awesome for fabricating. I wish my handle was a little longer, but as is, it works alright. Welding around this flammable rag isn't the best idea. So I decided to swap it out with this 3 quarter galvanized threaded plug that I had. They're easy to get and very common at any hardware store pretty much. For a vent, I'm using this old piece of steel tube out of a flush mount light fixture. Definitely helps to drill a pilot hole. Now I'm stepping up to a bigger drill bit. I always oil my drill bits when I drill through anything. It's just a good habit to have. Keeping it as clean as possible to avoid getting schmoo down in the gas tank, but it's unavoidable sometimes. Here I got through. I'm cleaning it up with the grinder. My hole size is slightly smaller than my steel pipe. So here I'm trimming the small steel pipe, cleaning it up really good, deburring it the best I can with the drill and sending a wire brush through it. Obviously metal shavings in my gas wouldn't be a good thing at all, so I'm doing my best to avoid that. This thin little pipe piece actually welded on pretty well. I was kind of surprised by that. Sometimes I blow through thin stuff. I was half expecting to, but I didn't. And I tried to get as thorough as a job as possible to avoid any leaks. And other times I'll even smear JB Weld on over top of my weld after. Just for extra security. Just checking for leaks real quick in my weld with a black hose and some water mixed with dish soap. Everything looks good. I had this quarter turn ball valve hanging out and a black piece of fuel line. So I stuck it on there. Figured it would work good for a vent and it does. Okay for the spigot part I have a three quarter threaded brass nipple about two inches. I picked brass because brass is going to seal better, and I have another part that goes into that. It's basically half inch to three quarter coarse thread for hoses, and an old utility line off a washer and dryer, basically. It's the water lines. To plug the hose when I'm not using it, I just have a rubber plug connected to some paracord. When you use used old parts that have been laying around you basically have to clean the shit out of everything i'm using a flexi hone this is half inch or three quarter i can't quite remember that works pretty well wire brush works well whatever you got so i have two fittings here basically the standard three quarter thread nipple and the coarse thread conversion fitting that basically makes it so i can screw the hose on to the nipple they were not intended to go together so i had to basically pound them together and then solder them and it worked exceptionally well in this case it's just what i had and what i had to do i didn't feel like going out and buying a specific fitting for this application by the way solder is impervious to gasoline the dreaded top handle i wanted to make this handle basically so i could pick the can up easily and carry it around and have something that was kind of centered, you know, on the top. I, I tried to bend these not so 90 degree angles uh, a couple of different attempts. I actually have a pipe bender too, but it ended up creasing and kinking really bad. So I just fabbed up these angles here and it came out okay. Now it's time for some paint. I found this uh, old can of red. This is really old paint. I picked up somewhere for free anyway this is my new mixing technique it worked out all right a hose clamp would have worked better as luck would have it this spray paint was actually still good and the older stuff i have found is far better quality 
I hung it off a rafter in my garage and sprayed it. No primer. I didn't see a need for it really. I mean, I should have used it, but it is, after all, just a gas can. It went pretty well. After letting the paint dry out for about 24 hours, I put rubbing alcohol in there. Rubbing alcohol evaporates really fast, and this was a good way to test for leaks. It's better than having gas all over the place. Also, it cleaned it out exceptionally well. No leaks, thank God. Plus, rubbing alcohol won't be as destructive as gasoline dumping down a drain or on the ground. After that, I just hung it upside down from a joist in my garage to dry for a couple days. Here I am filling it up with real gas out of my improvised cat litter gas can. Yeah, I got it all over the spray paint, but it didn't hurt it because it's the old formula, which is far better. The spray paint you get nowadays at the store does not stand up to gasoline at all. I would have had to have clear coated this with a 2K clear coat that I had for cars, basically. But I got lucky with this old spray paint. So here's the grand finale, the final test. I hand painted gasoline on the side of it, as you can probably tell. It doesn't look the neatest, but it works. I ordered some stencils off Amazon. Hopefully they come in a couple days and maybe I'll use those and neaten it up. I don't know. It depends on how I'm feeling. Good thing to have anyway. The nozzle will fit in basically any gas orifice. It's a little smaller in diameter than the gas pump nozzle at the gas stations. So it works really good. I tried it in my car and all that and it fits great. I get a really solid stream when pouring this. I hope you can see that in this video. Uh, besides it being a little heavy, it is awesome. I'm really impressed with the finished result. And here's one last look at it. If you appreciate this content and you got anything out of this or it inspired you in any way, I humbly ask you to please give this a like thumbs up, please comment, subscribe. There's much more to come. My editing is getting better, thank God. I do all this editing myself and it takes a very long time. I try not to shill anything or sell like other YouTubes. If you appreciate that, please let me know. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching this. Have a blessed day.